officials and a church were among the buildings burnt in Pretoria West today. Locals targeted foreign nationals who they blame for widespread crime. It echoes last week's violence in Rosettenville, Johannesburg. We are here in South Africa to come and work. We are not here to do a problem. We are not here to do a crime. We are doing a panavita and the mechanic. There's a motor bus electrician. There's a panavita there. There's a mechanic there. Two weeks time, they come and burn our job here. It's almost 30 something, uh, almost car for 30 something that they burn here. An Ethiopian is now in a critical condition in a hospital after being shot by attackers at Kwamakuta, south of Durban. In the last five months, 310 Ethiopians' dead bodies sent to their home than to Ethiopia. In Durban, in 2014 and 2015, we loaded the lives of 35 Ethiopians. We sent the dead body to home. The assault on foreign nationals continues unabated. Today, more shops were looted and hundreds fled their homes. They sought refuge at police stations, sports grounds and other centers as attacks spread. We are tired of being walk on the street and, and behind us we are attacked. Quere, quere. What is the meaning of that? In Africa, a black land. We are all colossal. If not my language, our colors are decent. We do have work permits, some they do have asylums, some they do have all the documents you can mention. But what we can ask from South African government, they must move around, check around, check the illegal immigrants. They must catch those ones. We are not doing any violence. We just need to do our self-defense. That's what we have a right. We need to die our place because if we are not doing, we are not going to be South African place. We are not, this is also South African place, but this is the way we stay. Jumelangral Amakela Moko Daily Teta on SABC One. Nagalibito kina Nicolette Waga Mashile. Wana wakwa Bush Patrick Mapula Ning. Esli Bonne from Insetiorel Khanenyona. But Barune, our brothers and sisters that join Hadi country today, wana balla. But Arabat Swari Gavuche mo South Africa. Raba Luisa Anya. Raba di Zamela mi Mereko. Tweri butan loko ni Moko Daily Teta. Koko rana weni es mota mo South Africa. Oba Tweri vang baba ko bereke lao kela baba bereke ngulu weni. Basa chwing mo South Africa. How are you treating them? Right, but the long hours, the and the working conditions are at the So we would turn now. Oh, as a South African, we would treat about Baruni, but you are the country to the one the way you treat them. Someone on the camera, I'm going to give you no longer shandu and I'm Sanjay Joba session Nicolette's beggar. Oh, double guy, no, oh, 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 we senior kusabo abaya matiba kala guti foreign labour gasi gasi affecta gakungas bona abantu lab they were crying about the minimum wage national minimum wage which was three point five saying guti ingani but abantu bok figa bona baya guazgu accept because batata no mayin ngoba basuzwen onye silo elabo wanna find out from you a kaya uguti ngomu nyu abantu tabangu abantu bok figa ma be figa la banta tela im seven zeni because we've seen abanye babo beze be shower be pumela pande mkuakeni be shisela ne 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 itolo zabo na nini zela abaya zame langa Welcome how do you feel we've got some people but one from outside of the country but over South Africa okay now we are going to okay 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 what are the qualifications? How feel that or all about some service? But about the connection, okay. We decide to get the kitchen. How feel that the kitchen? We try to get about a roof at three thousand. We need qualifications. That's the rest. And then hotel is in bago or motu omo wakanti. How feel that about three thousand kira offer? But all service are more than three thousand. Now you have to just get about ten thousand for service from seven to seven. 
ola wa ka ntle ha fihla wa dumela hore nna ke a sebetsa ke enga 3000 yo and then nna ke sala ke sa tsholo tsebetsa so o re a etse jwang motho nna ke disaito ga atloela batho ba ba sebetsa jwalo ka dislave mm ha ba ba tswaga handle but okay e re go understand the handle tswarelo o re a tlogele because ba tlo mo treat badly ka ba o re a tlogele because o accept that 3000 versus when we accept 10000 it means that lo wena go ka se o tholo mmere go o Okay, Nagar at Rele because Bamu Trita Joloka sleeve. But give way, Hetel. Try to get how by Hosebet Zahab Soko has some Cheluke in Gara South Africa. All right, let's look a little bit of a social because coming in on social media. Urquaneza, Makuana. Foreigners in South Africa, they are taking over every single thing because they accept anything and they are easily manipulated. Can you perhaps you can hear from your side, Hori, what they've got to say about that Facebook coming in? Let me start with Zain because Lento Kurman Nicoletti into a balega call because Abanta Manning, Kuna 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 Mark debate at Rothwell. Abanta but I'm a South Africans. Actually, they are very lazy. They are choosy when it comes to M7s. Hence, Abantu Bok figure bego as good to bona. Beita atele M7s. Omunye mundu tukwa corner line is Africa. We are close to 27% of unemployment, which means ayiko le M7s. Estina sisi banga na Abantu Bok figure. Zain, what is your take? Kule simo esfana na lesu. Tuya, itaba nguta Abantu Banga panzle ba figure labezo ntate le M7s yen? Nbinge lele ngu Zain nge kamang kwa mge soe tungbonga nje i opportunity. So now, mena ngamle la nje beng kabanga uguti yebo bias bafiga la bazo ngamlela i i i i i lontu zana i msebe inti goto age no konati si na yole opportunity uguti singazika lela uguti zini goto age ugu ube ya bafiga ngago la uguti basuge batuwa lise gonke logo ugu ube njenga ma human trafficking illegal drugs distribution la e country ni yetu so njengzo ngamlela njengi tinyabo ngange kulu njela njengi uti si kweme indaba ya maforein labor things. Okay. Zain, before mzapa ngi tetele mfetu, kune sisi shua banta bani nguti ni nabanta basi nguti ma Afrika, kune msebe nza nina funu genza yeti niya kala uguti ama tuba msebe nza aweko. Nja uguti nje msebe nza se ingati ini, msebe nza ugyo kline makaya, ani tati nje nga msebe nza eni nga itata, nbona ngati ili nishisi tunzi, uti nina loko zain. Nkabanguti velege ba lazy abantu betu. Tina geti na abantu abastole la abo abani gazbe be land be bendao. Tina abastole vele si saga zegi. Ukaga zega gwe tu loko ba figa na boba taisela ogu ubinga logo gulu la ge ogu tu abantu basingene. Singene lewe pagat. Kupata ganja if uzo abantu beti ni na ni figa lani zota tela abantu imsebens ni tati na mahola manga ni foot ogwen zuguti abantu bok figa bona benga gua zuguti beni koshie tengo bakuwa zota Tata bantu banga panzi ngoba bono batata no mai. Mina ngiti ayikole because of... Pamseli makafuwa. Kire hayo ntweo because of nagi aziba mwoki zwa nti. Ene kiswa situation ni hukina haki tuwa le sotu kita South Africa kitleti in. So haki tuwa la mwotu mwo khali ke mwotu zi mwo nagi kitleti se kitleti in. I have to do something egi kwa na mkwale sotu. Haki tuwa la msebezi umpa 1.5 ena kubata 3,000. Kitwa isi ya hai. What about a national minimum wage njenga manje ngiza mafrika u 3.5? Abantu basa ngiza mafrika abati ingane kwa yona wena uti even 1.5 it's enough because we have to zelen la ngiza mafrika. Yes, ngoba yena umuntu lo afuni maleningi kumele apply le lento la ifundele. Okay. Yeah. Asizwe ukuthi abantu bathina ohlanga ngothini lakho ne collect about this. Perhaps a re ko Ausi Mathodi who is also from Botswana gore na Ausi Mathodi khona le the sentiment mo South Africa ya gore but pakotla la bari they they don't mind hiring foreign labor and a lot of people are saying it's because it's cheap labor. Is that the case? Um, uh, Kinda Masori, Kitwa Kuki represent Botswana and then Kale Kilimo South Africa. Okay. Uh, firstly, Batuba South Africa, ne? they consider themselves eh, Batuba Lohorna because of South Africa, ke country eh, Lohorna lead resources. Mm. So Batuba they bank advantage. We choose Baba on a key advantage, but a bank advantage, a hore, it's once by its end to a right. I get it. Mm. So all the month we saw about the aim. Kitwa Botswana, Kitwa South Africa, Kitwa Rekisa, Kitwa Business. I get it. Mm. Obviously, I get it. 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 So when I get it, I get it. 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 I get
pelo re tlogeng se dintsi di di credit di eng ha di sa go berekela try something else ba le plan b o di re tlogela go ntse re point ana re mang o tswa go country kai o etsa o to tswa mereko e a re se mulere pula pe di soxe tsa rona re tsore re batla eng re le ma african ba tso re tlogela ntse re mang o irang mang o e ka se e ka se e so a re bele way forward instead of instead of re ntse re point ana ka menwana perhaps what says matlodi is saying is what we need to be looking at for now what are some of the lessons there ka di chutang rune as south africans from our foreign brothers and sisters rebatla mo sa tlhoko ba to berekeng perhaps that for a clock must be implemented or america to make a phone some say breaking say bua stingita lo luta ba old ball le ga nga bo tele tsa Welcome back to Daily Teta. And sir, level it up. I had the foreign labor. You know, we are protected. We know that there's an Immigration Act in South Africa, 13 of 2002, a regulating foreign labor. It prescribes the rules and the regulations. We are not just about protecting them, but also how does an employer go about being able to hire them? But just going a little bit back into history, we are not only leaving. We've got some people wanting to move to South Africa to be able to look and seek merit from South Africa. We are joined on the couch by Lawrence Dube, who is a Zimbabwean. He's working as a marketing and a social political analyst. Lintate James Tumarai, who is from Uganda, who's an English educator. Welcome to Daily Teta. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Uh, Lawrence, let's perhaps start with you and just get a better understanding of history. Yeah, you know, immigration in moving into different countries and seeking job opportunities, especially in light of South Africa. Well, I think the, the concept of, of, of immigration and moving starts from, from the Garden of Eden when, when Adam and Eve get kicked out. I think they went somewhere. <laughs> they went somewhere. Yeah. They had home, and for a second, yeah. home did not look like what they, it, it should was. Have been. should have been, yes. according to the owner, and they went somewhere. So, so immigration is an old age thing. Mm. Uh, the reasons why people immigrate uh, differed from, from many reasons. Mm. Uh, the first one being, in this modern world, probably being economy. Mm. Uh, the average person probably moves from one economy to another because of basic economics. Mm. Uh, also, for a lot of Africans, a lot of the movement is also driven by politi uh, the politi yes. socio-political environment. Yes. Uh, for a lot of uh, uh, brothers in Africa, you are seeing places where there was war, for example, yeah. that people would move for, for, for those reasons. Mm. You look at a scenario like Zimbabwe in the past 10 years where the economy went down, mm. then you saw a, a larger influx. Mm. 10, 15 years ago, uh, you probably would have not even been bothered by the fact that there were Zimbabwe. Those people that grew up in Soweto would know mm. they were always there. It is mm. not a new phenomenon. Mm. In the 80s, in the, in the 90s, they were always there. Yeah. So the socio-political factors and economic factors have probably been always the issues. And then, of course, people move for, for, for simple experience reasons, which is your, your ordinary tourist. Mm -hmm. uh, someone comes to South Africa, they meet a nice young lass, and they <laughs> live in South Africa because they fell in love or yeah. saw something yeah. more beautiful, women or whatever. So I think people have always been moving. Yeah. Perhaps the, 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 the conversation around the challenges, therefore, yeah. is, is to ask yourself, when they move somewhere, what is the state of that somewhere? And what will be the response from those people who are there? Just to just jump in there, perhaps, Lawrence, it's also important for or paint a picture I mean, as South Africans and probably other countries who worry about people coming into their country, can we perhaps maybe just in two or three sentences tell us about how the other African countries protected our people during a time where we were having, you know, issues on the political horizon? Well, you know, South Africa is a, is a, is a in literally, in, in democratic terms, is, is, a, is a baby, is a democracy. Mm. That's why we're still dealing with the most minor issue of all, mm. land. Mm. In, any, in, any, in any liberation system, the first thing you're dealing with is issue of land. Mm. Yeah. And South Africa is since 94 still talking about mm. land. Mm. So we, are, we literally, South Africa as a country is, is a baby in, in terms of that. So yeah. The question is, who carried the baby at some point or another? Yes. Which is a factor that always comes up in this discussion. Yes. And obviously, you look at the, the history of, of, of the fighting between the ANC, you would know that the ANC for a long time was in places like Zambia, mm. in places like there was an ANC in Zimbabwe, for yeah. example. Mm, yeah. uh, Chief Albert Lutuli was born in Zimbabwe, for example. Mm. A whole crew of Tabombegi, you know, and lots of those guys were, were, were at that time. And a lot of children were born uh, in that scope, whether in, in Botswana, in Zambia, and Zimbabwe. So there was a lot of, of efforts that came in to bring in the liberation of South Africa through the cooperation with other, other okay. countries and other countries. Yeah. Let me come to you, James, uh, as a teacher, uh, English teacher in South Africa. What was the biggest reason Air Gwenzo moved from home to here? Uh, actually, my, my 
adventure in different countries. I was working actually previously previously in Tanzania. Mm -hmm. Then uh, I came to South Africa. Why? But uh, one of the reasons that have always driven me to move to different countries is God, actually. Okay. Okay. Uh, my kind of person who likes to depend on God mm. to influence events around me. Mm. So it was an event that drove me from my country because I felt like I'm depending on people around me and they are disappointing me. Mm. So because I was reading so much the Bible, I was praying so much, and then I realized the hand of God mm. in many different uh, spheres of life. I said, now let me take another step of faith, go to another country where nobody knows me mm. except God. Okay. But you yes. know, um, how has the history of uh, wars in Uganda maybe influenced most of uh, the migration from, U from Uganda to South Africa? No, in my country, the war has not been affecting people from moving from there. Mm. I see actually people are coming in there. Yeah. Okay. People are just coming in and the country is welcoming the people there, mm. which is very good. Just as, uh, as a teacher, I'm, I'm just, let me ask this, as a teacher, don't you ever heard of some teachers saying that maybe we have enough English teachers uh, in South Africa, uh, why here kind of thing? Uh, have that thing ever affected you somehow? You know, uh, Actually, I'm a principal at the same time. Mm. Okay. I want to tell you that I always tell my teachers that, you know what, invest wisdom in you. Mm. You don't need to be uh, afraid of anybody that so-and-so is, is in the same expertise like me, mm. so he's, it, might be, it might be better than me. Mm. Go outside there, build your brand, your image with wisdom, mm. understanding intelligence, display it among the learners. They, they will always tell who is the best. Mm. For me, I always try to, uh, to encourage people to, to train themselves to become the best because the world is looking for people who can equip the young generation of of tomorrow. Mm. James, I, I want to, you know, you've, you said you worked in Tanzania. I want to mm. get a better picture of the working conditions and landscape in Tanzania versus South Africa. And, and maybe perhaps you can touch into whether or not you, and, and maybe Lawrence, you can jump in, Horna, have you ever experienced some sort of animosity in, in the spaces that you work currently? It is amazing in Tanzania. I had the best time okay. when I was working there. Benizan, what and was happening the, there? No, during that time I was fasting hard. Okay. I wanted to see so much uh, the hand of God. It so happens that in Tanzania also the immigration office is uh, they are affecting the 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 labor from foreign uh, foreign workers. Yes, and. Uh, they came to my school where I was working, I remember, mm. in the restaurant there. And uh, unfortunately, at that time, I was, I, w I was fighting very hard to learn the, the, the local language. Mm -hmm. And I was using the local language to translate one of the novels that the learners, I was, I was feeling that they don't understand properly. Mm. So I think when they came in, for me, I was already flowing in the, mm. in the language. Mm. So they did not witness. And actually, one of my colleagues was there also teaching the same language. For her, I think she has been, she was always negligent about about learning the language, but as an English teacher, these are the some of the things that we must make sure we capture in our minds. Mm. So they did not I experience me. Okay. They did not see me that I was as even a, around. As an outside, yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. Let's just go quickly to this uh, comment to Ben as a day. Okay, living wage won't make a difference as long as companies are employing undocumented foreigners uh, who dis uh, with desperation is taken as a blessing uh, to our employers. Is that the case, though, uh, uh, Lawrence? I, I think the discussion must. Be, must be put at, at two levels. The mm -hmm. first one is that you there is the issue of the informal sector, mm -hmm. which is where I see the discussion is going. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then there's the professional sector. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of these things that people talk about in the open say is, mm. is an issue of the informal sector. The yes. unskilled the, the, the labor. Unskilled labor. Mm. Okay. The average foreigner walks in, and when they go into the space, the, two things happen. It's either they're already skilled, mm. and if they're skilled, they probably walked into South Africa with probably with their payment. Yes. Mm. The other side of the equation is that someone walks into South Africa and they're not skilled. Mm. And that's the average person that you meet looking for any job, yeah. and that's the person that is most people talk about and say mm. is willing to take. But, mm. but I, I want to pose this to a question to you. If I walk in empty-handed, and I walk somewhere, and someone says, look, I've got a room here and I've got a job for you here. I'll give you 50 rand a day. Mm. And I walked in with nothing. Mm. What is the percentage increase of my salary? Hypothetically it's a, it's speaking. It's 100%. It's 100%. Exactly. Yes. So, so instantly it gets me a foot in, mm. it gets me food on the table, yeah. it gets and me somewhere shelter. to lay my head. Mm. So for, for someone else coming from somewhere else, for them it's a foot, it's a, it's a foot in. Mm. So I understand why a lot of people would walk into a space and, and at that point when they're offered something, mm. they will gladly take it for what it is. But Lawrence, yeah. we, do have, we do have professionals and skilled people that walk into South Africa, you have a chat with them while they're serving you at, mm. uh, at a restaurant mm. and they tell you, I am a doctor mm. by profession. 
Okay. It's a transition stage. Okay. I, can, I can tell you this. We've all had that experience. Mm. I was a broadcaster for eight years in Zimbabwe. Yeah. I walked into South Africa. I went into a restaurant for a year. Why? Wow. Because I couldn't walk from ZBC into SABC. And just get a job. And just get a job. Yeah. You've got to learn the language. You've got to learn the culture. You've got to represent the culture very well. Yes. So what you do is you take the nearest convenient thing mm. that allows you to continue to develop. At the time in a restaurant, I finished my first degree. Mm. I finished my second degree. Mm. And I work for South Africa's leading university. Mm. So sure. the, the, the question is, you meet them at the restaurant, but do they always stay there? Yes. If they stay there, they're probably a person who came in informally. Mm. They yes. came from somewhere. They didn't have anything that they would offer the environment. Mm. So they will probably stay there. But I, I advise you, that same doctor, go mm. back to them later. You'll probably bump into them uh, 10 years from now. At and they'll tell you a different, in a hospital, they're telling you a different story. Sure. Uh, especially if we are acting as for analysis to Vula Cotini or Storm Cullens of Kumana, sees with Paula Uchina, a summon so calculator. Yo, Daily Tenta family, what a beautiful privilege. I'm waking up to such a beautiful space in the KZN. Rechaki Lemo KZN Hub. And we're going to be talking to the people here about something that's called foreign labor. And when we talk about foreign labor, we are essentially talking about people that are coming from, you know, different countries around the continent and around the world that are coming to seek job opportunities in South Africa. Some people have said that people that come from outside, you know, um, crush the local market by essentially taking lower wages than the, than the you know, the minimum wage of 3,500 rand. Some people are saying that as South Africans, we are far too entitled. You know, that's our problem, our sense of entitlement, thinking that, you know, just because I'm a South African, I should get a certain job. And they're saying that you didn't work before that Nigerian or that Malawian came here. So how do you then even begin to say that that person is taking your job? My name is Sebo Khomari. Come with me as we explore Richards Bay and foreign labor. My lady, how are you? I'm fine. Yes, you, we came out here to Richards Bay today to come talk about labor, mainly because it's a tourist town and you have your hotels, your domestics, and people that are cleaning the boat. It offers, you know, good jobs for low-end um, or low-skilled people, South Africans in particular. But some people are saying that these jobs, these low-end skills jobs, are now taking, taken by foreigners because they are willing to accept lower wages. Do you think that this thing of maybe people f coming from outside accepting lower wages that is beneath the minimum wage is killing the local job sector? Yes, it is certainly killing the local job sector because we need jobs. Our people need jobs, and people coming taking that would actually suited them best, mm. it's killing our economy. If I was also a South African and people are coming in the country and uh, they're, they're taking opportunities from them, I would be also worried. Mm. But I believe we, we are from one continent. Mm. It's a pity that our colonizers, when they came, they put borders, you know, like they put borders around us and then when we look at each other, we see foreigners. I want to give you a scenario here. We're talking about foreign labor. There is a South African uh, domestic worker as, as a homeowner who says to you, um, the government says you must pay me 3,500 rand. And there's one who comes from outside and says, I can do the same job for 1,500 rand. As the homeowner who's also an earner has to pay another person, which one of the two would you take? I'll definitely go for the cheapest one. I mean, I'm a, I'm, I'm a regular people, person and wherever I can save money, I'll do that. Mm. And uh, it's ridiculous for me to, to tell me that I must choose between the more expensive of one and the cheapest one. You know, in business, when you're looking for quality mm. and in aviation, example, the industry that I'm in, you don't find the average guy understanding aviation or being qualified in aviation. Mm. So therefore, you, you might have to outsource outside the country so that the quality can come in. So it's, 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 a, it's, it's a bit of a, a dicey one. But when it's just basic, mm. a, a basic job, a basic, and if there's a foreigner versus a South African, it's going to the South African. Welcome back to a daily tater and uh, thank you very much, Seppo, because being a Sekai Richards Bay, so we are born on one back corner. We are born on one back corner. We're talking about India uh, Balegile, foreign labor, and on the couch, Jengamanji, we have Janet Ajere from Nigeria, who's an evangelist, or corner Jengamanji. There's a very nice comment coming in, and also Lawrence Sokon uh, from, it seems, uh, a small map, which I don't understand why we South Africans suffer while foreigners prosper and take over. I'm not speaking about a 
fairness, I'm speaking uh, truth and experience. Ask yourself if they will accept us the way we did uh, if we have to go to our countries. Well. Let me quickly come to you, uh, Janet. Do you think that um, the way, if maybe we feel like we've accepted people from Nigeria and South Africa, will they be accepted or are they accepted the same way in Nigeria? If I go to Nigeria and look for a job, is it going to be the same thing as a Nigerian coming to South Africa? You know, I have to be very honest. Yes. We Nigerians, we love foreigners. You know, let me tell you something. I, I'm a Nigerian, but I studied in Ghana. Mm -hmm. You know, I came to understand that anytime I go home with my school friends those days, they will take my Ghanaian friends. In fact, some of my family people will give them what they won't give me. And I get jealous. I came, they say that there is this thing in, in our place in Nigeria that you must value foreigners because sometimes they can be angels. Mm -hmm. Despite that, you don't know where they're coming from. So, any foreigner that is in Nigeria now, in ask them, you will see that they are really happy. Now, here in South Africa, some of us, we are finding it very, very difficult to, to collaborate, to network with South Africa. It's, it, it's because I feel that some of them feel like maybe we are a threat. You know, I, I, I have some books, I'm talking about real women. Mm -hmm. This is the thing. I have a lot of South African sisters that when I share ideas with them, all of a sudden they would push me away and take it. Meanwhile, this is what I call them. Mm -hmm. As a gospel preacher, as a gospel mini uh, songwriter, yeah. mm -hmm. you know. So, so there, there's something I want South Africans to understand that you know the Bible said that love your neighbor as you love yourself. Mm -hmm. the, the land is for all of us as, as Africans. Mm -hmm. Yes, this is your country, like identified, but mm -hmm. your country belongs to God. And when you love other people with the love of God, mm -hmm. God Himself have a way of opening doors and giving you a brilliant attractive idea mm -hmm. that you used to make wealth money. Janet, perhaps let's maybe, when, you, when, you, when, when, when Kini posed the question about whether or not South Africans are treated or, or other foreigners are treated better in Nigeria, you spoke about treatment. Mm -hmm. Let's delve into workspaces. Okay. Are, are they given the same type of treatment when it comes to work? Because so I, I don't think to a certain extent South Africans are not necessarily welcoming, mm -hmm. but I think that they're feeling a bit of a gripe when it comes to the job space. Mm -hmm. They're saying Jorge, foreign labor is taking over our space because foreign labor is willing to accept low income, which means that now more th you're not no just taking away a choice from me, mm -hmm. you're taking away the entire job. Okay. So I want to understand the, the foreign mar the, the, the labor market in Nigeria. Okay. In Nigeria foreigner. now, let me tell you, some of foreigners are in Nigeria without even permits. They okay. don't even have, in fact, in our border, in Nigerian border, this is SBC1, international television, in Nigerian border, immediately you enter Lagos. Yes. You cross the border. Nobody will ask you anything. In fact, when you start your thing, hardly before they will start asking you paper all those. So you see that you don't know who is a real Nigerian. You don't know who is. And the only thing you can know who the pe where the person is coming from is maybe their accent. You know. Oh, That's why yes, we have yes. the Igbos, the Yorubas, yes. the Hausas. Do I need a working permit to work in Nigeria? Uh, normally, immediately you cross our border. Yes. Nobody. In fact, nobody will ask you that because sometimes we don't have some. We have the organization that can ask to permit but sometimes they are not working like how they are working here in South Africa yeah. they, they can ask to pay back. so you find that foreigners are benefiting you just need to enter into the market have good friends and then you zoom up let me tell you our night our film industry is looking is having foreigners Foreign, South yeah. Africans but they are paying them more okay. to, to, to add films Lawrence you wanted mm -hmm. to, to weigh in yes I think I, I, the com that comment there that came up was interesting it says firstly why do we South Africans suffer while su when foreigners prosper mm -hmm. yeah. in your own ordinary view have you found that the foreign are prospering and you are suffering. Let, let's, let's examine that statement on its own. Mm. If you walk in every day, what are some of the perceptions that you have of many foreigners and yourselves? Mm. I, I don't think it's accurate. I think anyone who knows any form of statistics in Africa knows that South Africa has, has got all, it's, in terms of in, in a, a, a lifestyle, you know, just basic lifestyle. South Africans have probably the best lifestyle uh, there is in Africa. Yeah. South Africa per individual, mm -hmm. South Africans live better than the average South African. Yes. The only problem with South Africa is that I've always said South Africa is like a, in a neighborhood, is like the, the rich, the big house in the neighborhood. Mm. Yeah. When you walk into the neighbor, when you walk into their house, the lounge looks excellent, mm. everything looks fancy. Yeah. The problem is if you go into the bedroom, you then realize they're sleeping on the floor. Mm -hmm. It's because South Africa's basic dyna uh, dynamics are such that different people are living in a different life. 
lifestyle. Yes. So in the lounge, the picture of the lounge, you have one half of the population of so the probably white. So yeah, yeah. It's, it's Alexander and certain. Yes. And, and, and so the problem is, the same debate that we're having, chances are high, the most interested party is a poor black South African mm -hmm. who probably be having that kind of perception, that kind of things. Geez, there's so many foreigners here mm -hmm. and they look like they are doing all right. okay. Mm -hmm. But in actual fact, they're possibly not. I, I, I think, Lawrence, uh, I think young Kalente se kulmanjenga manje ikalela pukbanta basi mazinge na pants where they feel oguti abantu banga pants baba tatilim se menza. If you look at imse menza se sakulmanga aga kuluaz. We look at imse menza efano na as as low as as being a gardener as as imse if in the farm as well. They feel like those are our jobs that we should be doing. But abamnigezong ban. Yeah, abamnigezong ban do imse menza. Are those jobs not vacant? Abamnigezong ban do imse menza. Here's here is the honest fact. Yeah. The same thing argument holds with issues of yama 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 documentation yama yeah. paper yeah. yeah. with hang to look into an idea same as answer we need to go yeah i call for an sms on my face i call for an niggas so, 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 so you're saying that uh, in king i bagash starting point some is breaking yes so we're after this <laughs>
If you ask him, he didn't come to wait last, last time, the other lady didn't come to wait. I sit down three times. The third time I called the general manager. This lady is giving a problem, doesn't come to wait. A day before she didn't come to wait. I asked okay. the girl, why did you come to wait? Okay. I think it's come to it because yeah. you said it down twice. I don't want to sit down. You must just listen. How? Okay. Tandai, in, in, in closing, your point is that uh, South Africans don't respect Um Sevens. They don't what? respect Um Sevens. Okay. They, work, they, they are people who work hard. I don't say all of them. They are some yes. who work hard, who come to work, who do their job. That one comes to me to work. They don't do anything at work. Um, I think, I think your line is terrible, Tanda, yeah. but we see Cholile point out because I'm calling for you. I will be able to TV good sitting at Aganjan Uta Balakona in college. Yes, uh, Lawrence, yes. Is, is there an assertion or a sentiment for South Africans perhaps don't have a great work ethic? I, th I think it's just perceptive. Okay. Honestly speaking, a, a, lot, a lot of the things that we think about each other are just purely perceptive. Mm. In my experience, I think there are people with different work ethics mm -hmm. and that people with different work cultures. Yes. And, and in my experience, uh, you know, it depends on also where you are. Mm. Uh, someone said they're from Kwa Kwa. Someone mm. said they're from where. Wherever they came from, even in South Africa, they probably still came for the same reason mm. as Mabu and yeah. came across. Mm. Yes. Why didn't you just stay in Kwa Kwa? Mm. Probably it's an economic situation. Yes. It's how thing we're all looking for gold. The mm. question is, can you dig? Mm. Uh, so, the perception that they are South Africans don't work hard is absolutely not true. So yeah. I think as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. Two, the perception that there's probably more intelligent. I've, I've heard this, this lie that's said constantly around Zimbabweans, that Zimbabweans are more intelligent. I don't think so. I, I honestly don't think so. I wow. think it's just... Wow, uh, you're just being yes, humble I work, right I work, there. I, work, <laughs> honestly, I don't. I, I, work, I work for South Africa, probably one of South Africa's leading business schools. Yeah. And yeah. I was also a student at, at that leading business school. Mm. And to be honest with you, there are South Africans who are doing as well as yeah. the Zimbabwean yeah. guys, yeah. as well as the Ghanaian guys. Yeah. And it's not necessarily a truth. Yeah. I think it's only because the more you get exposed to, to the more you get exposed in different levels of society in South Africa yeah. is when the picture sort of changes. Yeah. The problem is at base, yeah. at base, yeah. you will find people are not educated. You'll find all these challenges. But there's another side of South Africa where you realize that it is not different. A good work ethic, a, a very educated South African shop, and they can do things on their own, exactly. even without you know, foreigners. You know, South Africans love working hard. The only thing is that when they are not working the job they love, they won't work it. Mm. So this is why sometimes you see a South African, you say, okay, I will give you this. Some of them will say, okay, this is not really what I want to do. As far as it's not what the person loves, the person cannot do that. So we choose it. Mm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. The South Africans that I know that I've worked with, like I know one friend of mine, we all in this mm. music thing, he came all the way from Eastern Cape. You know this guy, he will be in studio working, singing. Mm. And I'm asking myself, what kind of a guy is the one that told him, my friend, don't you rest? He said, no, I want to be a star. Mm. And I was very amazed because I never said that. But you know, South Africans work because his it passion is to be a musician. Yeah. Let me bring in you Esther know. on this one because he, he seems to agree with the notion that uh, <laughs> um, uh, South Africans are very choosy when it comes to work. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, what, what, why are you agreeing with that? I'm so agreeing with it because. When I came to this country, I wanted to hit the industry mm. in acting like as quick as possible, yes. you know, but then it's not an easy industry to enter like yes. just in a snap. Don't just walk into it. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Believe me, it's not. Eh? So I had no. to use one of my talents, that hairdressing, yes. but then I got to realize that it's more foreigners who do hair yes. than South Africans. Yes. And I actually got South Africans asking me such a question. Why are you guys most in the saloons, not us? Mm. And for me, the answer is like, you got to answer yourself. If mm. I can take a step by step to learn how to do hair, then why not you? Mm. Esther, can I ask you a question? Do you know any of the regulations in South Africa that protect you? As a hairdresser? As, 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 as a worker, as a foreign uh, a laborer in South Africa? Some, yes. So, <laughs> do, you do you feel protected? About not at all. Not at all. Mm. Why is that? Because uh, I still feel the tension. Okay. I still feel the tension, even if I have the, the right papers, I have to go to home affairs and renew my papers still. But still at the same time, I'm not treated as the next person who is a South African, mm. okay? There is that bullying. Okay. You in know, the workspace. Yes, in the workspace. Yeah. There is that thing that shows you that, yeah, yeah, yeah. you are the goyam. Oh. So it's the, it's the us and the them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nicole, I just put something around this issue around the, the work ethic issue. Yeah. Look, the average foreigner walks into a country as a single objective economy. 
to work. Mm -hmm. So it's only obvious that most foreigners are available to work on a Sunday. When mm -hmm. a stock fail a car, when a because you've got relatives yes. here. Yeah. I attend one wedding in a long time yes. uh, because that's, that's how few people have. If I have to go for a wedding, I've got to think, do I want to go across the border, the Bay Bridge border? Uh, so I've got a lot of conversations. So, so South Africans have a bigger lifestyle issue uh, because it's their own home country. Uh, so sometimes I think we confuse the two yeah. elements around South Africans don't want to come to work. Mm. I think they have a more holistic lifestyle yes. than the average foreigner who's at work specifically for nothing else but probably work. for work. Oh. They then build a lifestyle over time. Mm. But I think let's not conflict the two to then cast aspersions on South Africans that South Africans are probably don't want to work, mm. don't want to come late. Mm. They will drink their money because oh, they've got enough relatives to sit down and drink with. Mm. You, you've, you've got a, there's, there's, there's two sides to this whole thing. Yeah. You know. Interesting conversation. I think what our guests are really doing for us. Mm -hmm. Also, as a South Africans, we do we mustn't be so hard on ourselves. But you know what? But what we do need to question and what we do need to maybe as Kini always says, please do stay with us after the break. It's been a very interesting conversation, Mora Daily Tetalhono, because Rachuta man Rachuta. Sometimes Ruchuta Romanati because Ru Bula Mat or Magaro will be exposed a little bit. And what we're talking about is foreign labor in South Africa. But also, what are some of the challenges? So by the experience young, Mobali Mosa Africa, but in Yakala America Fela and nothing else. Rato Wali Put Bobo, who is from the DRC, I mean he's only been in South Africa for three days. Already on Ali Isha Horonali language barrier, and there's so much that's happening because you don't speak English fluently, which then means you don't speak all the other South African languages. Tell us a little bit about what your experience has been and have you tried to find a job in South Africa or did you come here because there's a business? What's happening? I'm coming here but for Can you talk learning. a little bit louder for me? I'm coming but for learning English. Okay. Yeah. So you, how are you going to um, eat? How are you going to be able to get food on the table? Are you going to find a job? My budget only, I, my, my boss is sending me here for learning English. Okay. I'm working by the mechanic in Congo there. Uh, so you're working at a mechanic in Congo? Yeah. And your boss sent you to South Africa to learn English? Yes. How has it been so far? Oh, I think so, I can get maybe three months. Okay. Three months, yeah. After yeah. three months, I'm going back. Okay. Yes, that's very interesting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> The con but it's, it's that confidence yes. thing when you when it comes yes. to languages. Thank okay. you so much, Bobo. We'll be speaking to you a little bit later on. Arboli Ausimo, over to you. Uh, my name is Sandega Kumalo. Mm. So I have a question to Mr. Lawrence, mm -hmm. I think. So, Mr. Lawrence, what was your biggest fear when you decided to come to South Africa? Well, well I think for me, now, the, the fear was, was I going to do what I was doing there here? Mm. And, and the fear came out to true. The, uh, no. The, question, the answer was no. <laughs> the answer was no. And, and that's because the nature of any, when you walk into any foreign environment, is that you've got to adapt. Mm. Yeah. You've got to first look at the landscape and think to yourself, where are the opportunities currently? Mm -hmm. yeah. Two, you've got to look at uh, what kind of environment are you walking into? I, honestly, I'm privileged because I, I, I lived one. The average person finds themselves living in a place where there's a shack. But yeah. my, my father, my father was as a South African citizen, my mother is Zimbabwean, but generally, gener I mean, gener generationally we're from Zimbabwe. Oh, yeah. So I had a home. The average person walks into this country sometimes without even knowing where they're going to sleep. <laughs> exactly. I, I went into a two-bedroom home and I yeah. could sleep somewhere. So I, I probably have slightly different challenges mm -hmm. than the average person. Yeah. But the average person walks into Park Station and thinks to themselves, where am I going? Mm -hmm. And the first place they walk into is Hebrew. You think mm -hmm. Hebrew is where they want to stay? No, Hebrew is the nearest yes, place yes. to stay That's on arrival. Lawrence, Lawrence, we're still finding each other. So, like yeah. when I came to South Africa 12 years ago, my worst fear was the language. Mm. You know, I, I came from the airport, I saw myself in four ways area. But the day I came to oh, town, nice I yeah, saw yeah, a lot yeah, of. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you went straight to four ways. <laughs> yeah. But the day I came to town, I actually saw a lot of black people. I have to make a call and say, Am I still in South Africa? Mm. Because remember from the airport to four ways, <laughs> and friend, then from the four ways to town, one of those days, I saw a lot of blacks, you know, speaking these languages. I became mm. traumatized. Mm. I have to make a call. What language were you speaking? I was speaking Igbo and okay. English, you know. Okay. I do speak a little of French, you know. Yeah. I don't understand French, yeah. So my worst fear was the language because from airport to four ways where I met white people, you know, four ways in 
here yeah, English. Oh, yeah. And then from four ways to town, where I met blacks, all this. When you met us. Oh, yes. Your people, your southern people. I said, am I still in South Africa? This is what yeah. I asked. I, am I still in South Africa? They yeah. say you are in town. Yeah. I said, what is town? And, in, and in the Texas, you know, they will be doing like this, up, yeah. up, up. And I'm yeah. asking myself, what is the meaning of up, up? They say, anytime I remember, I use this public transport, yeah. just point up. It's taking you straight to where you see your black brothers and sisters. Mm. <laughs> Let's try to go, go, go across. If, if you were, if there was a job opportunity, let's say a very high skill job opportunity, Yabu CEO, and there was a very qualified and talented foreign uh, national and maybe a South African who's also got the same type of qualifications, do you think that there should be preference given to a South African because they are national? Um, the first preference than the other because level a level. In the and I don't really think it should be. Then, guys, now uh, as we're about to wrap up the, the show, okay. we wanna actually see Vulani Ames launching a band going forward. I'll come to you. You, uh, Bob Dube, Ectenini, Yining and Bella, and Melissa Capel as ministering others because we can sit here, have a good conversation, but mm. people on the ground, it look like we are just moving and, 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 and ignoring that ticking bomb that's about to happen mm. because yeah. we'll see a man to be she's that will never happen, maybe mm. in four ways or in Sentin, but Guzo and Zagale Alexander, Guzo and Zagale, KZN as well. How do we best uh, prevent a situation in Jingale? Well, I think the first thing is we need to educate society and try and get rid of perceptions. Mm. Uh, the first one is don't think because you don't have a job it's got something to do with a foreigner. Yes. Mm. It's got something to do with you and a job. Mm. I think let's take a personal responsibility. Uh, have we realized that our response to, to our poverty is different in other African countries? Mm. In Zimbabwe, they took out a whole president without even one cheap Simba chips being taken off a shop. <laughs> a whole no, president. No, no, a whole no. president. Yeah. A whole president. Mm. You want to remove a small premier, you bend the whole town. Mm. That's uh, so awesome. the first thing is, it's yeah. just a simple understanding that there is a better way to respond to whatever crisis. Yeah. So South Africa has, has a, a little bit of a different issue in terms of, in terms of the culture and, and the language, and, and perhaps maybe we must speak about uh, anger issues, mm. societal and responses, it's, it's, right? It, it seems as if it's uh, another language that we speak as South Africans because uh, it, it's like yeah. an official Absolutely. language. To it's the language that government responds yeah. respond to, yes. Yeah. If yeah. Officially, they put a certain language in the language that we respond to. I think the second thing is also looking to entrepreneurship. The average foreigner in your country is, is, is probably more entrepreneurial than you yes. think. Yeah. Yeah. You look at the Somalis and the Spaza shops. Mm. What, what does the word Spaza mean? Is anyone remembers very well? Yeah. It, it's Educated. hidden. Yeah. Yeah. Spaza, spaza means it's a, hidden, corner shop. a corner shop. Corner shop. Yeah. And if you remember, the history of apartheid was that black people couldn't do some of those businesses. Mm. So what you will do is you will then do something kokasi in the, mm. in the corner of beyond, mm. and it will just be by the wall and unescala la and you are selling your sweets. Yeah. So why is it that most people's Africans have found themselves struggling when they run a spaza shop, but Somalis are still striving. Mm. The one guy is selling this week, two years later, he now has opened his spaza shop. Uh -huh. yeah. no, or Aunt it's Mang Mang. It's there is something that is happening in Ekruleni now. Yeah. You know, I love what Ekruleni are doing. They are empowering people to sell things on the street. You mm. see foreigners, you see South Africans, you know, everybody is selling now. Now, what that means is that they want everybody to come out and network and know each other, you know? And, and the foreigners, like what I'm doing now, there's what I'm doing with South Africa, what, do you do? what we are doing now is that we are networking with artists, we are networking with churches, pastors, you know. Yeah. Why am I doing this is because I want to tell South Africans, mm. I'm a Nigerian, but the thing is that I love you, I have a little thing that I can give. Mm. So yeah. come mm. and let us. Two weeks ago, I was in Alberton mm. in one of the locations in Power Because of time, Janet, yeah. we have to give yeah. Esther, Esther a chance as well. What would you like to see different, Esther? For me, what I would like to see different, adding on, it's going to be adding on what he said. Mm. You have the garage. Why do you have to wait for somebody and you have to step the shop? Mm. Why don't you step the shop? Mm. Okay, I go up and I pay 450 for Abbott. Mm. School is free here. Mm. You do not need to pay the 450 to get that metric certificate. Mm. Why not go for it? Mm. Sure. sure. 
It's yeah. up to you, South Africa. We go to Uzwile in Kulumesi Kulumile. No ma ivele as Rulange Ekanda. But the Kulumai Tini gela na gui el most pegan jigu teli cheta. Si kona na kona footi in Kulenzo Kumano ngagu as go to Paul. If kona si kshenga pande si akoli sapati teli chetu ya kubeba. Si phone lelo us email lelo us chelgu tika tela and figure ngagu. Kwa unyango udi buti sawe ni as a South African. Kwa na merko na kesa unyaki uti kimo timu wana. Is it really their fault? Is it? I mean, who who who's accountable for that? And that's what we need to be and getting an understanding of. But tomorrow, Ravoya food, tomorrow, daily, it's like a half past ten, more SABC one. It's like a cult culture. But it's not the cult that's almost South Africa. It's a guy. This culture of cults. Bye.